I do understand that being said. Uh, dear international gender champions and alumni, dear colleagues, dear friends, welcome to all of you joining us today to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the International Gender Champions Network. The post-COVID-19 world should be one of that, one that is grounded on fairer and more resilient societies. Recent events such as the death of George Floyd served as a much needed reminder of the harmful consequences of exclusion and discrimination, not only on marginalized communities, but also on society as a whole. The IGC stands in solidarity with the global fight against racism and supports the peaceful struggle against all and intersecting forms of discrimination. I trust that today, as we celebrate our achievements, we'll also be able to identify gaps and opportunities for the network as it continues to expand, deepen its impact and champion new norms. We need to truly live up to and embody IGC's values of respect, fairness, and diversity. Creating a safe space for all voices to be heard and participate in a truly inclusive and respectful manner is more important than ever, so as to leverage everyone's talent and creativity and to achieve better outcomes for everyone in all our diversity. This includes the need to move away from detrimental, detrimental binary stereotypes, recognize different gender identities, and act against discriminatory behavior in all its forms. We hope that the Gender Champions Challenge, which we will launch today, will set as a mechanism for us all to make this a personal and institutional priority and open up a space for meaningful conversations within our organizations and amongst our peers in the coming months. I also call on you to help us expand our reach to underrepresented regional groups so we can be truly representative and drive more meaningful impact. On a final point, I wish to highlight the importance of ensuring the sustainability of our initiative. I think we can all recognize the essential role of the IGC Secretariat, and I wish to use this opportunity to thank them for their unwavering dedication to the cause of the IGC. They have been working in convening us and supporting us to achieve our mission. We are very grateful. Many of you have contributed to the IGC's success over the past years, and we are particularly grateful for the general financial contribution of Switzerland. However, to ensure the long-term sustainability of the initiative and showcase the diversity of our supporters, it is necessary for us to broaden the donor base. Over the next few weeks and months, members of the global board will be reaching out to you to seek contributions, which can be either in kind or direct. The IGC Secretariat also stands ready to discuss this further with you. I trust that many of us will be able to support the important work of the initiative to the extent we can. Now, before we kick off this celebration, will have the honor to hear from the United Nations Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, an outstanding gender champion in New York, 
who has kindly shared a video message with us. I send my warmest congratulations to the International Gender Champions Network on your fifth anniversary. I am a proud International Gender Champion. Since I entered office, the United Nations has achieved gender parity among our senior officials and the leaders of our teams around the world. I am determined to build on this success. Today, the women's leadership and participation promoted by International Gender Champions are more important than ever as we face the COVID-19 pandemic. Women are disproportionately affected by job losses and economic pain. Their rights and voices are central to the recovery. I hope more men will step up and commit to women's rights. And I'd like to see gender parity in the delegations I meet and in the candidates proposed to me for senior roles. Gender equality is essential to the recovery from COVID-19 and to building a more peaceful and stable world on a healthy planet. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, for that uh, strong message of support to the international gender champions. I would now like uh, to turn over the floor to uh, the moderator of this session, uh, Corinne Momal Vanyan, Executive Director of the Kofi Annan Foundation. Thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you Corinne? very, thank you very much, uh, Martin and. Welcome all, dear International Gender Champions, dear alumni. Welcome to this afternoon. Bonjour à tous. We uh, have people joining us from the six IGC hubs today and alumni joining us from even further afar. It's great that we have seen already so many faces on screen. We are going to do our best to make this celebration interactive and even festive. Um, and with uh, this goal in mind, we have been asked, uh, speakers are asked to toast um, the IGC at the end of their remarks. You're, of course, welcome to join them. I'm, I'm really, really delighted to have been asked to, uh, to moderate this session this afternoon. As some of you may know, the initiative is very close to my heart because I worked very closely with Michael Muller and Ambassador Hamamoto at the very start of the, uh, of the initiative as we try to incubate it and develop its, uh, its governance. I hope to myself become a gender champion shortly in my new capacity as executive director of the Kofi Annan Foundation. In the five years since it started, the net network has probably accomplished more than its founders and early supporters dared hope for. This journey has clearly proven the power of leadership. It is first and foremost a leadership network. It has shown that uh, leadership, political will, and collab collaboration can do wonders. More importantly, there is still tremendous potential for the years to come. So um, our first toast this afternoon, I think, should not be to the past of the initiative, but to its future, and I raise my glass to the future of the gender champions. It is just orange juice, by the way, as we have a long afternoon ahead of us. Uh, today, it is the first time that we gather, gather champions across the six hubs uh, and alumni. And the COVID-19 crisis has, of course, uh, as the Secretary General has said, been extremely disruptive. It has caused immense suffering all over the world. But it has also shifted the way that we work and that we communicate. Uh, with our world becoming increasingly virtual, I trust that today's event will only be the beginning of more global interactions and initiatives among the network uh, in this format. Um, today, we wanted to give as, uh, the floor to as many champions as possible uh, to showcase the diversity of the network and hear more about their uh, experience across the six hubs. So we will first hear from two of our co-founders, then from representatives of each hub, and we will also launch the Gender Champions Challenge. So I have been asked to be quite ruthless uh, 
in moderating the event and uh, reminding speakers of their allotted time. Um, we also to give the opportunity to this, uh, uh, for this uh, event to be a really interactive, um, it has been suggested that we have a breakout session at the end in smaller groups, a uh, 20 minute private uh, session where everyone will be able to discuss. Uh, for that session, we invite you to describe in your group an object or an image which represents for you personally either the biggest barrier or the biggest opportunity to advance gender equality. And this will be really a nice breaker. I have just a few more housekeeping elements to share with you before we start to make sure that we better keep track of time. Um, slides will remind uh, speakers uh, when their time is over. And uh, you should also know that this pl the plenary session uh, is recorded and will be made available online after the event. Uh, as you have seen, we have an expert in visual communication to, with us today, Ms. Uh, Elizabeth Ozon, who worked on visualization, uh, visualization of the IDC story and uh, she will also capture the highlights of this discussion. Please do not hesitate to use the chat function to interact with us and to share any idea and suggestion. We'll kindly also ask you to remain muted until we get to the breakout session. So now without further ado, it is my very, very great pleasure to give the floor to two of the IGC uh, co-founders, now IGC alumni, Ambassador Pam Pamela Hamamoto, who was the uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. in Geneva at the creation of the IGCs, and Michael Muller, who was Director General of the U.N. Office at Geneva. Pamela, Michael, you have the floor. Thank you, Corinne. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. We're so excited to be celebrating International Geneva Champions' fifth anniversary with you all today. Thank you for joining us. Five years ago, we launched this initiative in Geneva with a bold vision for promoting gender equality. And because of your commitment to action and your willingness to hold each other accountable, we far exceeded our expectations. So first of all, we'd like to say thank you. In early 2015, in line with the Obama administration's commitment to protecting and empowering women and girls, I launched a cross-cutting gender initiative called The Future She Deserves and I was working to engage the international Geneva community around its core pillars of gender-based violence, adolescent girls' health, women's economic empowerment, and women's leadership. It quickly became obvious that people were anxious to break out of their silos and to look for innovative ways to tackle these gender issues by working together. I think Michael was going to say a few words as well. I forgot my to unmute. I always do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. So at the same time, I, uh, uh, along with many others, were working to shape the sustainable development goals and to move them um, onward for implementation. And um, although goal five focused specifically on gender equality, it was apparent that the common thread running through all of these 17 goals was that women and girls were being disproportionately impacted and suffering widespread social injustice around the world. It was also very clear that if we were ever to achieve these goals, there was no way that we were going to be able to do that if the other half of humanity was not part of the equation. So both of us understood the value of cooperation and that we had the best chance of accelerating progress toward gender equality if we worked together. United around a common cause, so we joined forces and together with Caitlin, uh, who I see on the, on the screen as well, uh, from Women at the Table, we decided to create a leadership network committed to driving progress for women and international gender champions was born. Was born. At the launch five years ago, I uh, began my remarks by saying that leadership matters, and that a deci as decision makers, we have a special responsibility um, to uh, show the way. Uh, IGC has been successful because it is easy to understand and it is easy to implement, and it is easy to measure. But more importantly, IGC is thriving because of your, your efforts to use your, your leadership platform in very practical yet powerful ways to drive change. 
And because gender issues are global, complex, and interconnected, any force for change must cut across disciplines, organizations, and other traditional boundaries. Our network of champions does exactly that. We are geographically, ethnically, and culturally diverse, yet we share a vision to change the way we approach gender issues, to raise women's voices in all fora, to empower everyone, women and men, in all levels of our organizations. I'd like to acknowledge Caitlin Craft Buckman, CEO and founder of Women at the Table, who's joining us today, of course. She helped shape this vision from the start, and she helped grow this network over the past five years. We now have more than 270 active champions spread across our hubs in Geneva, New York, Vienna, Nairobi, The Hague, and Paris. We also have more than 160 alumni champions many of whom have moved on to new posts and new responsibilities, yet remain leading advocates for gender equality. I'm especially pleased that norms have shifted and that today the push for gender equality remains top of mind throughout the multilateral system. And I'm thrilled that the Panel Parity Pledge has made the notion of single sex panels obsolete and unacceptable in the hubs where IGC operates. And it's, it's significantly raised women's voices in international fora and public debates. This pledge we all make is a very visual, powerful, contagious tool that I hope will continue to open up opportunities for more diverse perspectives to be heard. Our vision of providing an effective platform for collaboration and the sharing of data, information and ideas has come to life also through our impact groups. We currently have six of those impact groups in trade, representation, change management, disarmament, justice, and standards. Through these impact groups, IGC is now used strategically to advance um, policies and shape multilateral discussion towards achieving gender equality. We'll be hearing more about the incredible impact these impact groups have already had, but a few highlights I'd like to mention are that uh, the IGC's trade impact group championed the first ever declaration on trade and women's economic empowerment, which was signed by more than 120 um, members and observers at the WTO Ministerial Conference in Buenos Aires in 2017. IGC's representation impact group developed a gender responsive assemblies toolkit with best practices and tools to guide attendees at key international conferences and meetings. And IGC's disarmament impact group was nominated for arms control person of the year in 2018. Also in 2018, IGC was selected by the Paris Peace Forum as one of the 10 winning projects for innovative global governance. We'd like to recognize all of the hard work that went into these and IGC's many other accomplishments, but there are far too many to mention. And while it's nice to be recognized for the impact IGC has had in transforming the gender landscape, we all know too well there's so much more to do. Unfortunately, I feel we get lulled into believing that incremental progress is acceptable. Last year, the World Economic Forum's Gender Gap Report estimated that gender parity would not be achieved for 108 years. This year, that estimate dropped to 99 and a half years, and many reports lauded the fact that we're moving forward. To Michael and me, that certainly doesn't feel like cause for celebration. Over the past few months, uh, disruption from COVID-19 has forced us to radically change the way we live, work, learn, shop, exercise, and interact with others. When our backs are against the wall, we're able to quickly adapt our behaviors and to transform a society. So in order to achieve gender equality in our lifetimes, we need to adopt a similar mindset. We need to feel threatened by this ongoing inequality and injustice, and we need to feel emboldened to continue to prioritize our work as gender champions. IGC was built around the spirit of cooperation and inclusiveness, so we ask that you continue to support each other's work and to look for opportunities to bring more champions into our network. We ask that you shine a spotlight on your IGC commitments and achievements for the world to see and commit to calling out those who continue to resist change. Since moving back to the United States in 2017, I've continued to champion gender equality 
through engagement with the Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University, the Leadership Council for Women and National Security, and Plowshares Fund's Women's Initiative. And over the coming months, I'm hoping to engage more private sector players as gender champions. And to our alumni champions, thank you for remaining engaged. Much of the success of IGC is due to your early efforts. And with our new alumni initiative, we'd like to stay in touch and explore additional ways to level the playing field for women. I'm an alumni myself. I am still in Geneva working on a number of other jobs. And I don't miss an opportunity to, uh, to, 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 to push the principles of uh, the, uh, the, the, the gender champions uh, to make sure that uh, both in, uh, in recruitment and in the way that the organizations work and that they reach out um, that uh, gender is uh, where it should be. So a toast to all of you. Thank you for your dedication and hard work as champions for change. We're so proud of all we've accomplished and we, we're very grateful for your leadership and your support. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Pamela and Michael, for your vision, for your leadership. And it's really incredible to hear how much has been achieved in only five years. Um, I trust that your call to the alumni to champion gender equality will help the network expand its impact beyond the current uh, membership. So now we will uh, hear from each of our hubs uh, starting uh, with uh, Geneva, we've asked uh, representatives of all the hubs to respond to two questions. One to tell us what the IGC, what difference the IGC has made in their hub, and two, what are the opportunities and game ch changes going forward? And we will start with our birthplace, Geneva, and I'm now going to give the floor to Ambassador Monique van Dalen permanent representative of the Netherlands to the United Nations in Geneva and member of the IGC Global Board. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And uh, hello to you, Corinne, and hello to all the party guests uh, this afternoon. It was, uh, it was great to hear the story from our um, uh, founding mother and father, so to speak. So uh, it's, uh, it's up to us all to, to take it further. Geneva, as the, as the founding hub, is still the largest. It has given birth to uh, many impact groups and a strong community of peers. Um, we have created spaces for sharing and uh, support by hosting uh, all kinds of meetings and, and events um, for peers at the, at the champion level and expert level exchanges as well with, with focal points. Um, we hope that we can keep momentum because this has both helped with uh, awareness. For example, it was already mentioned, um, making sure that the gender aspect is taken into account in, for example, panels or in speeches. Uh, but also it helped with uh, support. It's wonderful to know that um, many other colleagues are trying to implement a, a gender-based approach in their work and this creates a sense of community and, and also allows us to speak up when necessary. If we, for example, see a panel that is not uh, gender uh, parity aware. Um, for me personally, it, um, it has really helped me to, to focus action with my, with my personal pledge. And one objective is to increase the diversity and representation of members both regionally and into the private sector so that the initiative inspires more action, more broadly, and also gathers different perspectives and ideas for exchange amongst us. I really believe that um, in bringing together all actors working on the promotion of gender, inclu including NGOs, states, international organizations, and the private sector, um, working in all kinds of areas that we are dealing with here in Geneva, from, from health to human rights, to trade, to disarmament uh, and humanitarian affairs, um, will uh, have, they, they, all these, these uh, aims should be uh, promoting uh, gender equality and that will mutually reinforce um, uh, us and be more effective also uh, on, the, on the ground. Um, 
I think that uh, one particular area that we could see as a game changer is, and we've noticed that especially now also uh, in this COVID-19 period, and we're experiencing it now, is digital technology, including data gathering, um, uh, which uh, has, uh, should, should focus a little bit more on gender uh, inequalities that manifest themselves in the, in the use of data and, and digital technology. I know that Switzerland is hosting a conference in October and uh, I hope that uh, we can use it to, uh, to focus our energy and resources going forward in this, uh, in this sense. Um, there is no country in the world, I would say, that has achieved full gender equality, despite all good intentions. Uh, and Michael already talked about uh, SDG uh, 5 on gender equality, women's empowerment. We really need to work together more effectively in Geneva, but everywhere in the world. And uh, I believe that the International Gender Champions is a great movement to keep us inspired, and to keep us focused. And I would like to toast to that. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Van Dalen. Uh, now we will zoom across the Atlantic to uh, New York and uh, we will hear from uh, Catherine Pollard, who is Under Secretary General for Management Strategy, Policy and Compliance at the United Nations. She's also a member of uh, the IGC Global Board. Her office takes part in the New York Steering Group. Catherine, is really, really good to have you this afternoon. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. So nice to see you. Dear <laughs> colleagues, champions, good friends. So nice to see you all and to see Michael as well. So it's certainly a great pleasure for me to be with you today to celebrate this fifth anniversary and to speak to you on behalf of the Hub in New York. How has IGC made a difference? Well, as we know, gender equality is fundamentally a question of power, as we still live in a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture. And to change this culture, the tone from the top is essential. Since the launch of the New York Hub in 2017, our champions, who are all decision makers, have role modeled action through the Panel Parity Pledge, as well as hundreds of personalized commitments. We also increase the visibility of this network and raised awareness for gender equality through a series of events that we held here in New York. By now, we are able to see some concrete results. Panel organizers in New York have understood that they need to ensure balanced representation. Our personal commitments have had a significant impact, both on the way our institutions tackle gender equality, as well as our, in our own behaviors. I'm sure my colleagues from New York who are also tuning in will be able to share more success stories during the group discussion afterwards. What are the opportunities and game changes going forward? At the beginning of 2020, when we entered the year of the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action, we were all very excited looking forward to this year. And I firmly believe that this year could mark an important milestone in our journey to achieve gender equality. Instead, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the progress that we've made over the past decades is at risk of being rolled back. UN Women's recent policy brief showed clearly that across every sphere, from health to the economy, security to social protection, the impact of COVID-19 is exacerbated for women and girls simply by virtue of their sex. However, we mustn't forget that the virus doesn't discriminate, social structures do. And so as we respond and adapt to COVID-19, we have a real opportunity to learn from this human crisis and to recover better by building back better together. Of course, better can only be achieved through collective action and inclusive leadership. And I truly believe that the international gender champions could be one of the key enablers to achieve this. So I certainly look forward to launching the Gender Champions Challenge the many discussions with you to come, and of course, all our work together going forward. So let me add my voice and raise my glass to international gender champions, onward, bigger, better, together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. And uh, now we'll turn to Vienna, 
zoom back to Europe and turn to Vienna. And uh, I will invite Mr. Lee Yong, who is the Director General of UNIDO, of the UN Industrial Development Organization. And UNIDO is also a member of the Vienna Steering Group to take the floor. Mr. Lee, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues, friends. Uh, it is uh, really my great pleasure to be speaking on behalf of the Vienna Hub of International Gender Champions today. Uh, please allow me to convey the heartfelt congratulations of the 29 Vienna-based champions for the fifth anniversary of IGC. Uh, we represent 18 permanent missions, eight international organizations, and three civil society ent entities. UNIDO is proud to be a member of Vienna Steering Group and also to have a staff uh, hub coordinator position for the last year, uh, which has allowed us to oversee many IGC activities. I want to thank uh, the IEA for soon taking over this rational function from UNIDO and uh, UNOF and uh, UNODC for initially coordinating the activities or the Vienna Hub after its creation in 2017. Allow me to share with you uh, how IGC has helped us make a difference in Vienna. Uh, we have uh, come together on overarching global issues to promote gender equality. As an example, the Vienna chapter has created its first two impact groups this year, one led by UNIDO, Afghanistan and Finland on gender responsive assemblies with additional support so far pledged from the CTPTO and one of the nuclear industry led by Canada and the IEA. The IDC has inspired us to adopt gender responsive policies. In the specific case of UNIDO, just last month we promulgated a very important administrative instruction on panel parity, inspired by the IGC's panel parity pledge. Equally, the IEA has adopted special measures pursuant to DG Gross's commitment of uh, reaching gender parity in the professional high categories by 2025. Many other Vienna-based champions have implemented policies on gender parity and beyond, inspired by IGC. IGC has mainstreamed the discussion on gender outside the usual rigid structures. We are no longer meeting exclusively on dedicated commemoration days, such as the International Women's Day. Uh, thanks to IGC, gender has become a more visible and integrated element in our discussions and the coordination in Vienna. Uh, year 2020, being a pivotal international anniversary year for gender equality. We want, we want to build on these achievements, are conscious of the following opportunities, and a game changer going forward. The first, going beyond the sheer numbers. IGC teaches us that gender equality means more than getting to 50-50. What will be important is to encourage champions to make more programmatic commitments that address beyond our respective entity, the underlying, the structural barriers, resource gaps and the harmful social norms affecting women in society. And number two, the engaging men in gender equality. RGC currently counts for more men champions than women champions. Uh, we need to utilize IGC to showcase that gender equality is not only the women's issue. For example, last year, six Viennese uh, champions representing Australia, CTBTO, Mexico, Slovenia, UNIDO, UNOF, uh, UNODC, organized the IGC event on men as champions of gender equality. Promoting IGC as a credible network of expertise with adequate funding is also one of the important issues. The IGC helps to strategically coordinate gender equality efforts in its chapters 
to ensure IDC can contribute to offer sound advice and guidance, we may wish to consider mobilizing resources to fund hub coordinator positions that are currently volunteer-based and further support the Secretariat. The Vienna Hub has strongly benefited from IDC, and we want to thank the Secretariat and the Board for all other efforts uh, in helping us break down the gender barriers. We look forward to continuing our progress and to building the bridges with other hubs in the future. And we really would like to work together, move this agenda. On behalf of the Vienna-based champions, allow me to thank you for your attention. Also, uh, raise glasses for the toast. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Director General, and for also for reminding us that we should not only talk about gender equality on 8th of March, but work on it for the rest of the year as well. We'll now turn to Nairobi, and I will invite Mr. Roger Yates, who is the Regional Director of Plan International for the East and Southern Africa and the Middle East regions, to take the floor. Mr. Yates. Thank you very much, and it's really exciting to be uh, representing the Nairobi Hub for this event. Uh, we're a very new part of the network, and for me, it's like meeting my sisters and brothers, so it's very good. Um, so last November, we were just three champions in Nairobi, and, and we sat together, one from UN, one from diplomatic, and one from civil society, and we committed to generate some momentum and build a hub in Nairobi. Um, and since then, we've now built to 14 champions. We've just had another event with quite a few more committing. We're just trying to chase them down to make their pledges and join. Um, so we're very keen to learn what others have achieved, but already we've seen that champions have been taking advantage of the UN organizations centered in Nairobi, raising issues, for example, Costa Rica, um, putting resolutions on gender equality in the UN Environment Assembly and in the UN Habitat Assembly. So for, for us, forming the, the IGC network really gives space to connect and support and accelerate such initiatives and a unique space to connect with leaders across different sectors. So we've been talking about what opportunities to move and there's several things that we see. One is, is gender in urban areas and also gender in the environment because of the UN agencies centered there. We're also looking at the impact of COVID and realizing that with our, now we're used to engaging in meetings remotely, we can do a lot to help to get the voices of women and girls into our meetings. And we can work on um, gender equality online because there's a very strong telecom sector in Nairobi. And what we've seen is the importance of that divide in the light of COVID-19. Uh, we've talked about trying to bring much more attention to domestic violence and early marriage through our activities within the region um, and to bring strong gender awareness and feminist principles into the decisions on how our organizations go back to work so that we start to work differently and, as others have said, show our leadership in different ways. Uh, we're very keen, we've started to involve government in our discussions and we're keen to recruit government and business leaders into our network um, and start to look at impact groups that can work with all of these pieces. So I'd like to also raise my glass and toast to the success of five years as your newest recruit. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Mr. Yates. And uh, I made this network... Uh, in Nairobi grow as fast as the uh, other hubs. Uh, now we will turn to The Hague, where two representatives have asked uh, to speak on behalf of The Hub. We have both uh, Mrs. Uh, Lisa Helfand, who is uh, Ambassador of Canada to the Netherlands, and Mr. Heinz Walker Nederkorn, who is Ambassador of Switzerland to the Netherlands. And I give the floor to both. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, dear gender champion colleagues. 
The unique characteristic of the IGC initiative is the commitment of us to personally engage in gender equality in our own organization and our network. This concept works perfectly in The Hague, where most international organizations are already dealing with gender issues in their daily work. As an example for my personal action, I would like to mention the gender sur survey I initiated in my embassy. One takeaway was that many of our female staff members would appreciate the possibility of partially working from home. During the COVID pandemic, we experienced that home work office works well, and we are now looking into to make the respective adjustments. Another example is the establishment of the Justice Impact Group by the Canadian and Swedish ambassadors and its engagement for the Call It What It Is campaign, an effort to define sexual violence in conflict and provide victim guidance to practitioners, which you will hear more about on Wednesday. In closing, my most important lesson learned is this, the achievement of gender equality depends on the engagement of the whole society. This means men should be an active part of engagement just as much as women are. In this respect, a toast goes to the IGC initiative who helps me to be as a proud gender champion, an active part of this endeavor. Thank you very much. Over to Ambassador Lisa Helfen. Lisa. Thank you, Heinz. Hello, everyone. As a relatively new gender champion, I'm really encouraged that gender concerns are becoming a bigger part of the dialogue with more and more states and international organizations adding to this momentum. But as we all know, success comes with challenges. And one of the biggest problems facing us right now is the atomization of gender issues. As we're realizing that gender issues impact nearly every aspect of policy, we risk losing the center of gravity that holds these issues together. The commercial trade people go work on gender issues in their own corner, the development people work on gender in a separate corner, and we lose the central coordination and support we need to make a real dent in these issues. In the future, our major issue will be how we use this network to tie these different policy areas together. As an example, Heinz just raised the International Justice Impact Group that Canada created with Sweden here in The Hague. We established the group under the IJC framework in order to help coordinate state and NGO efforts to support the Women's Initiative for Gender Justice, Call It What It Is campaign, and to develop a more actionable definition of sexual violence in international criminal law, and to help make the process more victim-centric. The IGC has a brand that people know and respect and pay attention to. It gives us a ready network of supportive, committed champions that we can tap into to help us move this campaign forward. I'd encourage each of you to take a look at your gender priorities right now across the spectrum and ask, how can I use the IGC network to move these priorities forward? I strongly encourage you to take part in the impact group discussions as they're going to be a terrific opportunity to tie gender initiatives together. I don't have a glass in my hand, so I raise a virtual glass to the network at its anniversary. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassadors. Um, je vais maintenant me tourner vers l'antenne la plus récente du réseau, celle de Paris, lancée en novembre dernier. Et j'ai le très grand plaisir d'inviter Madame Louise Mouchi Kiwabo, qui est secrétaire générale de l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie à prendre la parole. Madame la secrétaire générale, vous avez la parole. Merci. Uh, merci infiniment. I will just say a word in English and then switch to um, my language and the language that I represent. Um, I'm just really delighted to be part of this wonderful group Um, indeed, myself as a representative of the Paris Hub and Paris itself, we are the newest born of this wonderful family. And I just want to say that um, our newness does not take away the energy and the ambition that we have for this um, uh, group and this organization. 
And, um, and of course, uh, I want to wish a, a wonderful anniversary uh, to thank, first of all, the, the founders of, of IGC and wish um, a, a wonderful anniv fifth anniversary uh, to this, uh, our international gender champions. As you know, I, I live in the country that um, has given us champagne. So even though I don't have a glass, I, I, uh, uh, I'll make sure we catch up um, at another time. So thank you very, very much. Je, euh, donc, euh, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, euh, la, la, euh, les champions euh, de Paris sont euh, les tout nouveaux, les tout derniers, les nouveaux-nés de cette très belle famille. Et donc, il, il est très tôt pour moi euh, de pouvoir tirer le moindre enseignement. Euh, C'est pour cela que je voudrais, en revanche, euh, partager avec vous mon ambition pour euh, notre antenne euh, de Paris et pour notre famille des, des champions euh, du genre. Dans toutes les fonctions que j'ai exercées depuis le début de ma vie professionnelle, j'ai toujours considéré que la question des droits des femmes était fondamentale pour la transformation de nos sociétés. L'expérience même de mon pays, le Rwanda, où euh, le Parlement est composé à plus de 60% de femmes, où la parité est inscrite dans la Constitution depuis l'année 2003, où 50% des diplômés de nos universités sont aujourd'hui des filles et des femmes, cette expérience m'a appris que les nations qui accordent aux femmes les mêmes droits et les mêmes opportunités qu'aux hommes n'étaient pas seulement plus justes, mais aussi plus performantes dans plusieurs domaines, qu'il s'agisse de la production de la richesse, de la solidarité sociale, de la créativité scientifique, culturelle, etc. J'ai donc très tôt acquis la conviction que les femmes étaient des actrices du changement et il n'y a absolument pas de développement ni de modernisation possible sans la moitié de l'humanité que constituent les femmes. Je suis donc encore une fois très heureuse d'être associée à cette initiative. C'est une occasion pour moi de poursuivre cet engagement de toute une vie, l'occasion de faire progresser la cause des femmes sur la place internationale de Paris, qui abrite non seulement l'organisation que je dirige, mais aussi l'UNESCO, le CDE et d'autres institutions très importantes. L'occasion aussi de promouvoir cette cause auprès des décideurs en Europe et en Afrique, les deux espaces où la francophonie compte la plupart de ses pays membres. Je rappelle 88 États et gouvernements membres de notre organisation. Donc, pour l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie, la question des droits et de l'autonomisation des femmes est centrale depuis la première conférence des femmes de la francophonie tenue il y a 20 ans à Luxembourg. Nous avons fait de l'égalité entre les hommes et les femmes un des axes majeurs de notre action. Nous nous sommes dotés d'une stratégie très volontariste avec l'ambition de faire de la communauté francophone un modèle en matière d'égalité. J'accorde donc une grande importance particulièrement à deux questions. D'abord l'éducation, ensuite l'émancipation économique. L'éducation parce que je crois que tout tient à cela. De nombreuses études le montrent si les jeunes filles vont à l'école et à l'université, elles s'ouvrent les portes de l'autonomie et de l'égalité avec les garçons. Concernant l'émancipation économique, c'est un aspect prioritaire. Il est important que les femmes et les filles puissent entrer dans le monde du travail et accéder à des emplois aussi intéressants et aussi rémunérateurs que ceux des hommes. Le défi est considérable, bien sûr, sur le continent euh, dont je viens, l'Afrique, où les femmes sont encore trop souvent dans des conditions de grande vulnérabilité économique et sociale, trop souvent reléguées dans le secteur informel. Le progrès est en marche, mais il faut l'accélérer et je m'engage à contribuer à cette accélération. Les autres questions, celles de l'égalité des droits ou de la lutte contre les violences, ne sont pas moins importantes, mais ma conviction est qu'il faut s'attaquer à la racine des problèmes et quand les femmes seront éduquées et travailleront dans les mêmes conditions que les hommes, 
elles seront mieux en mesure de se faire respecter et de faire avancer leur vie. C'est là donc ma boussole et ma feuille de route et vous pouvez être persuadé que je mettrai toute mon énergie à faire bouger les lignes, aussi bien en tant que secrétaire général de la francophonie qu'en tant que chef du hub parisien des champions du genre. Alors, la cellule de Paris euh, et les opportunités identifiées, nous n'en sommes donc euh, qu'au début, euh, dans un champ d'opportunités très large, mais permettez-moi d'indiquer très rapidement trois orientations. D'abord, euh, vous savez que Paris accueillera l'an prochain la grande conférence des Nations unies sur les femmes, baptisée Forum Génération Égalité, 25 ans après celle de Pékin, cette conférence fera le, le bilan des progrès et des reculs pour les femmes dans le monde. Elle dessinera aussi le chemin d'une nouvelle mobilisation pour plus d'égalité. Ce doit être l'occasion pour Paris d'inscrire l'égalité femmes-hommes dans sa signature internationale et de devenir une capitale de l'égalité des sexes. Et je m'y emploierai personnellement avec mes partenaires champions du genre de la cellule parisienne. En deuxième lieu, je veux contribuer à des progrès concrets sur les deux thématiques prioritaires que j'ai mentionnées tout à l'heure, à savoir l'éducation et l'autonomisation des femmes. Sur l'éducation, j'ai déjà lancé l'année dernière en Djamena au Tchad une grande conférence sur l'éducation des filles, et suite à laquelle nous sommes en train de construire un, un instrument de référence, une plateforme numérique qui permettra d'aider les pays à faire toute leur place aux filles dans les systèmes scolaires et à valoriser leur réussite. Je veux aussi contribuer à des progrès d'ici quelques semaines, très concrets sur l'autonomisation économique. Je suis en train de mettre en place un fonds de la francophonie pour les femmes, l'occasion m'ayant été donnée par la crise euh, euh, sanitaire que nous traversons, euh, on espère qu'on est vers la fin, au cours de laquelle les femmes sont en première ligne, je pense que quelqu'un d'autre l'a mentionné, et subissent brutalement, notamment en Afrique et dans les Caraïbes, où nous avons beaucoup de membres, les contre-coups de l'arrêt des activités. Mais ce fonds que, auquel j'appelle les États et autres acteurs à contribuer doit s'inscrire dans la durée. Nous devons le pérenniser, son objectif étant d'aider les femmes en situation de vulnérabilité non seulement à surmonter la crise économique, mais aussi à développer plus durablement des, act des activités génératrices de revenus. Quand on parle d'économie, il, il ne faut pas oublier que nous sommes dans, de, en train de vivre une grande révolution, la révolution du numérique. Je pense que la crise nous l'a prouvé, s'il fallait le prouver. Cette crise et, et ce numérique qui transforme en profondeur la production, le commerce, la consommation, et je suis convaincue que les femmes ne doivent pas rater ce tournant de la transformation numérique. Troisièmement et en dernier lieu, je souhaite me rendre utile en Afrique, mon continent d'origine. Je me suis d'ores et déjà engagée à mobiliser au moins deux dirigeants africains pour devenir champion du genre avec l'objectif, pourquoi pas, de créer une nouvelle cellule régionale en Afrique. J'entends par ailleurs mobiliser à nos côtés des personnalités d'autres institutions africaines telles que l'Union africaine. Voilà, chère famille, mes premières initiatives. D'autres suivront en cohérence avec la genre que vous avez eu l'excellente idée de réunir et je vous remercie infiniment. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Secrétaire générale et merci de tout ce que vous avez déjà fait euh, au sein euh, de la cellule parisienne des Gender Champions. Dear fellow champions and, uh, and alumni, we will now move on to the next part of our event. We're just running a few mi minutes late, but not many minutes late at all, which is a, a sign of how effective and disciplined a gender balanced network can be. So we will now go to the next session which, uh, which includes the launch of the Gender Champions Challenge. And I will now invite Anne-Sophie Loïs, who is UN representative and head of office of Plan International Geneva to present the challenge. And after that, we'll have an opportunity to start reflecting on the challenges and opportunities 
using uh, the uh, using the metaphors and the images that uh, we have collected. So, uh, Anne Sophie, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Corinne. Uh, dear gender champions and dear colleagues and friends. Uh, it's exciting to see you all here today at this virtual gathering. I hope you are well, uh, wherever you are. Um, but before talking about the Gender Champion Challenge, and of course with your permission, I would like to start by presenting my object. So you can see it here. It's uh, a piece of stone that I found in Brazil a couple of years ago. As you might see, it's a stone that particularly don't draw your attention at first sight. Its shape is round, its color is gray and a bit beige. It's nice to hold, its surface is smooth, and it's a bit heavy for its size. So, you know, why did I pick it up? It was just my curiosity, you know, what story can this stone tell me? If you open it and look inside, it's actually shows its true nature. I don't know if you can manage to see it, but it's a gem. It's a real crystal. It's a real crystal. And of course, if you polish it, it can become even more shiny like this little small piece I have here. And you might ask, what has this to do with barriers to or opportunity for achieving gender equality? But for me, this is just a metaphor for transformation. And it reminds me to actually look beyond appearance, to dig deeper, to listen more, to see what can emerge, and to invite me to be more open, to be ready, to be surprised, and to learn new things. I believe that we cannot remain on the surface to move our common agenda. We need to challenge gender stereotypes, gender norms, and also patriarchal structures. Some colleagues have mentioned this previously. This is the only way to eradicate gender injustices. And what does it mean for the network? You know, it can invite us to dig deeper and to tackle these road courses and to pay more attention to the inside and also to the soft skills in order to create better work climate and impact. We need to walk the talk and embody the gender champions values if we want to reach to the next level of awareness and action in our network. Several fellow gender champion has already talked about COVID-19, uh, also has the Secretary General mentioned it, as it has been a disruptive challenge, but it's also a major opportunity for us to think about the future of work and gender equality and to engage in a cross-network dialogue and to exchange about the changes that are needed to, to come to ensure that we harness the talent and creativity of all our colleagues. We are rapidly accelerating to move flexible work environments, but barriers remain. We had the mention of working more on, you know, on, on online that could also help to promote gender equality. We are aware that there is a significant power gap. When we talk about glass ceiling, some of my colleagues, they actually talk about cement ceiling uh, in some cases, preventing women attending the highest level of representation, responsibilities, and political leadership, fueled by unequal pay, uneven care burden, inequality, family policies, sexism, harassment, and sexual and gender-based violence, to just name a few barriers. So we have a long of work to do, you know, moving forward. We have also witnessed pushbacks and resistance in many areas, especially on women's sexual and reproductive health and rights. And generation equality, for example, talk about highlighting and address girls and young women's needs to be consulted and better included in shaping the presence, but also creating an equal future. At this critical time, when we global are fighting a pandemic, we invite you to take further action. We invite you to support us in keeping gender equality at the top of the global agenda and role modeling change in Gender Champion Challenge. So dear member of the IGC network, you all have a wealth of experiences and of good practices. So we would like to hear what works and hear your insights of what needs to come next. Concretely, we invite you to create a gender diverse and inclusive task team to explore these questions in your organizations, 
starting now, I mean, July to October. You could, for example, look at what works for you. Uh, what are the strengths in your organization regarding advanced gender equality and inclusion? Here we are looking at your learnings. What are the challenges, barriers that prevent you to make this enabling environment? And what needs to change? And we also need to ask ourselves what needs to come next? What opportunities and crystals are to be uncovered? How can you support an organizational culture that harness innovation, trust, creativity, and so much more? There are different ways of doing this. You could do it through policy change, uh, looking also at age, gender, and diversity. You could improve practices, working with role modeling, creating safe spaces, working with coaching and mentoring, create learning opportunities, read books and create discussion forums around gender equality at work. And also, what about looking at behavior and values? How do you respect others? What is your listening practices? How do you manage respect and fairness? There are many options. And of course, it's full up to you and your organization to decide what you want to work on. We would love to hear from you and your experience, the process and the change you're in, in November. So we have a couple of months to work on this. The details on this will be shared by the IGC Secretariat and also at the Focal Points Networks. And we, are, we will be you know, talking about this. And on the same time, the IGC Network will also accompany this journey with a couple of meetings uh, and looking how we can move forward together. All of this will give us idea and inspiration. What stones may we need to take up out from our backpacks that are heavy to make you know, to change our habits? What do we need to leave behind? And what are the crystals and gems that we might find on our journey? I'm ready to engage on this challenge, uh, start with challenge myself. Um, and uh, I hope that you would like to join me and I would like to wish you all uh, santé and happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anne-Sophie, and thank you for this uh, very poetic and uh, and uh, inspiring uh, metaphor of the hidden uh, hidden uh, crystal. So now we are going to break out in uh, several uh, groups. Um, the the application Zoom will automatically uh, assign us to different groups. We uh, approve. We invite you to approve the breakout group request, which should should soon pop up on your screen. And we will spend about 15-20 uh, minutes in these uh, groups, uh, which are not moderated, so you should feel free to intervene. Sometimes it's a bit difficult, these conversations, when there are many people on screen, but it makes them lively. So please intervene, share your object, share your uh, thoughts about the barriers and opportunities to gender equalities and uh, we hope we will have concrete ideas coming out of your discussions for the gender champions for the next few years. So I think now we should have the uh, breakout request popping. There we go. And we reconvene very briefly after this. Thank you. I do hope that, uh, that you had very good conversations. Um, I certainly did. We discussed for gender biases at very early ages, for instance, which uh, impact us uh, all. I really want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we have uh, a nice view of our uh, visual artist, Elizabeth Ozon, who is uh, putting together uh, drawing uh, to summarize our discussion. So we look forward to seeing the her, her uh, drawings uh, later. Um, I hope you, this uh, discussion has been not only the opportunity to uh, celebrate, but uh, especially to inspire you to undertake future in initiatives in your uh, respective hubs and learn from, from each other. As we said, this was the first time we, we brought all the hubs together, and I hope there will be more opportunities we have, in fact, a week of celebration for this uh, fifth anniversary. Fifth anniversary, five days of celebration with a focal points edition. As you know, although you are the champions, you work with focal points and they do a lot of work also. And a community of practice has been built among them 
which is very important. So there will be a focal points edition. There will be an impact group edition on Wednesday. There will be a podcast released by champions on Thursday. And on Friday, focal points will take part to, in an online edition to showcase how the IGC has made a difference in their work and their organizations. Against these very challenging times, against a, a backdrop, as we've ho- heard, of global pandemic, daily attacks against multilateralism, growing pushback against women's rights, your leadership and commitment is more than ever needed. Uh, I believe that the IGC network offers an innovative governance model that all of us can leverage, that I hope can be emulated in other, uh, in other uh, areas as well. With uh, your active engagement, the IGC has the potential to serve as a real platform to shape solutions to a more, towards a more inclusive, gender equitable and peaceful world. I cannot close this event without uh, a quote from Kofi Annan, who said, and I quote, gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge, the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development, and building good governance, end of quote. We have, you have accomplished a lot, but there's still a long way to go to transform policies, institutions, and mindsets. So let us keep gender equality on top of the agenda. Let us unite around our common goals. And I look forward to supporting the IGC initiative further and to collaborating with all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're even a little bit early, right on time. We will uh, publish uh, the uh, recording of the plenary session. We have uh, also, we will exchange the comments that have been made. And uh, I raise a final toast to all of you for being here with us this afternoon and for promoting gender equality. Merci et à très bientôt. Thank you, Corinne, for steering us. See you soon. Thank you, Corinne. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.